You're watching this video right now, or at least that's what your brain tells you. But what if I told you that right now doesn't actually exist? Not in space, not in time, not even in your own mind. The idea of now, that universal shared moment we all seem to occupy, might be nothing more than a convenient illusion. Because according to the best science we have, now is not real. Let's explore. We tend to live as though reality is a movie. Frame by frame, the present passes like film through a projector. There's a past which is gone, a future which hasn't happened, and now which we cling to like a spotlight. But what if time isn't like a movie reel at all? What if all of it, past, present, and future, already exists? And what we call now is just where our consciousness happens to be focused. This is where physics begins to diverge from our intuition. Einstein's theory of special relativity, published in 1905, shattered our common sense understanding of time. It showed that time is not absolute. It bends. It stretches. And most importantly, it doesn't tick the same way for everyone. Let's say you're standing still on a platform and a train speeds past. Two bolts of lightning strike at either end of the train. From your perspective, they happen at the same time. But someone inside the train, moving relative to you, might see the front bolt first and the rear bolt second, or the reverse. For them, the same event unfolds in a different order. This is known as the relativity of simultaneity, the idea that what's simultaneous to you might not be to someone else. In other words, your now is not their now. This gets even more mind-bending when we zoom out to cosmic scales. Imagine two distant galaxies, A and B, each billions of light years apart. You might say, right now something is happening on galaxy A and something is happening on galaxy B. But special relativity tells us that's meaningless. What's now on galaxy A depends entirely on your frame of reference, your speed, your motion, your gravitational field. Someone moving differently than you might place those events thousands or millions of years apart, which means there is no objective now. There's just a web of relative moments, all stitched together by your point of view. This leads to one of the most radical ideas in modern physics, the block universe. In this model, time is not something that flows. It's something that just is. Imagine the universe as a four-dimensional block three dimensions of space, and one of time. Every event from the birth of the stars to your next heartbeat already exists in this block. It's not unfolding, it's already there. Your movement through time, the sensation of flowing from past to future, is simply the path your consciousness takes as it moves through the block, like a spotlight scanning a mural. This view is called eternalism, and it means that your future might already be set. You just haven't scrolled there yet. Now let's talk about light cones. A concept from relativity that helps define what parts of the universe can affect you and what parts you can affect. If you imagine a diagram of space and time, your present moment is a single point. Everything that can send light to you, everything in your past light cone, is part of your history. Everything you can send light to, your future light cone, is part of your potential influence. But outside those cones lies a vast region of space-time that is, from your perspective, elsewhere. Untouchable, unseeable, and possibly not part of your now at all. Which leads to a chilling thought. Most of the universe is not only not here, it's not now at least not for you. Now let's bring it back to Earth. Even here in your daily life, now is a moving target. When you look up at the stars, you're seeing ancient light. The star you wish on might have exploded millions of years ago, but to your eyes, it's shining right now. That's not poetic exaggeration, it's just physics. And even on human scales, the illusion of now starts to crack. Take GPS satellites, for example. They orbit at high speeds and different gravitational fields. 
if we didn't account for the time distortion predicted by relativity, both from their speed and their altitude, they'd drift by 10 kilometers per day. So to make GPS work, we have to accept time is relative. And that means now depends on where you are, how fast you're moving, and what forces you're near. There is no single moment we all share. But wait, if physics shows that now doesn't exist universally, what about in your mind? Surely you must experience a present. Well, not quite. Your brain is constantly processing input from the outside world, but it takes time, about 80 to 500 milliseconds depending on the signal. That means your experience of the present is already in the past. You never actually feel reality as it happens. Your brain compensates for this by constructing a coherent model, smoothing delays, sinking stimuli, blending senses. It's so convincing you call it now. But it's a reconstruction, a hallucination of presence. Neuroscientists call this the specious present, the window of time your brain treats as now. Usually just a few seconds long, you think you're living moment to moment, but really your brain is assembling a highlight reel and playing it on a slight delay. Even your decisions arrive before you're aware of them. In famous experiments by Benjamin Liebet, the brain's motor signals activated hundreds of milliseconds before people felt like they made a conscious choice. So you're not even in sync with your own thoughts. Your now is trailing behind your actions. So why does it feel real? Why do we live as if there's a solid, dependable present? The answer is evolutionary. To survive, you need a coherent story of what's happening. You can't dodge a predator if your vision is half a second behind. You can't form memories if events feel scrambled. So evolution gave us a best guess engine, a brain that edits time, sinks experience, and pretends it's all happening now. It's not truth. It's a survival mechanism. And for the most part, it works, until you ask questions like this. Some philosophers go even further. They argue that time itself might not be fundamental, that deep down, the universe is a timeless structure, a web of relationships, not events. That time is something emergent, rising from complexity like temperature does from particles. In this view, now is not only unreal, so is before and after just patterns, just relations. And if that's true, then your whole life, every choice, every breath may already exist in a timeless map. You're not carving a path through the future. You're revealing one that was always there. Of course, not everyone agrees. Some physicists believe in the growing block universe, where the past is fixed, the present is real, and the future is undetermined. Others propose models like presentism, which says only the present exists. The past is gone and the future doesn't exist yet. But relativity resists these ideas. The math refuses to privilege any now. And our experience? It keeps reminding us we're lagging behind. So let's return to you, sitting here, watching this. Right now, or what your brain tells you is now, you're reflecting on something that already happened you're hearing a voice that was recorded in the past. You're living in a world that's always a step ahead. And yet, here you are, thinking, feeling, existing. Which begs the final question, if now isn't real, why does it feel so much like home? Maybe because it's the only place you'll ever be allowed to look from. Not because it's special, but because it's the only window your mind has you can't change the past. You can't see the future. You're left with the illusion of now, carefully painted, elegantly faked, a frame inside the film strip of time. And maybe, just maybe, that illusion is enough.